come back home. So before we move, I just say make a short and some kind slides. But they say we give her an idea of how SaaS they work. So what is SaaS? Okay, so SaaS now SCSS and SCSS now stands for syntactically awesome style sheet. That not always in SaaS. SaaS just be like CSS, but in a nicer way for us to be like our CSS in an awesome way. You know understand? What makes sense? SaaS no be just work on your meaning say the browser no even understand SaaS. No browser the processor. So SaaS now you need the pre-processor before you go through use SaaS. And you're gonna need to install them for your project as a preprocessor before your preprocessor will come to understand what you they write as SaaS and then you go translate them into CSS. Okay, so that you go worry about the whole thing when you write SaaS to do it for you. Another thing we're gonna need to know is saying uh SaaS, you they give your CSS some kind better superpower, they make them stronger. Like say they give you variables, even though you get custom props for CSS, but this one still they give you your own CSS variables. It they will allow us to do nesting, which is one of the most common things or most popular things about SAS. So we feed a nest our CSS. I will explain in a, in a minute. Then we also get mixes. Mixing is just be like where well, if you take a block of code and if you style out, get your style inside that block of code, then you go release out. I will explain all these things in a bit. Then also you get some kind of other features like you know functions and uh, imports and functions and all. Because now preprocessor scripting language, and eh? because now language you say the browser not they understand, you go need a preprocessor. Whether they work the, the scripting, whether they understand the SAS for us, it go make sense for a lot of developers. They allow us to use code over and over and over. Then I will say the preprocessor, they help us they speak out So, so why you need that? You go need SAS because SAS we use and build real world projects. No matter what, the same say SAS it they, it they make our CSS more functional. They give out some kind of pieces where we say we say if we don't get. For example, you see for here, so we get even variables for here. And with these variables, just like our custom props, we feel they use this just like JavaScript, right? You see they store values and they refer to those values anytime we want. And again, you see the syntax for mixing. So if we pack all our mixings here, and we feel they use them anytime we call this mixing, we feel they use them. So it, our code will be modular and more structured. And of course, as a developer, it makes us more productive. And if you Google them, if you search, or if you ask the community, support full ground for SaaS because in a mature technology, we we'll say you don't full ground like this. So it will be something we we'll just can't go. All right? And even CSS, they learn some of the things from SaaS right now. All right? So they get some kinds of things we need to know as the cocoa for SaaS like this. Number one, say we need to know say SaaS as we use the variables, it just allows us to store those values, right? And those values we feel use them anyhow for inside of our style sheet. And also for nesting, we say we're going to write style, we're going to write code inside code inside code. So if you get parent code, we're going to affect the children code or grandparent code, we're going to affect the grandchildren code because of nesting. So instead of making the write name in anyhow, we're going to also they use nesting and nesting will help us to solve many of those problems. We also get mixings as I do explain for now. So we we'll pack all our code into one block of code and then we we'll use them every time. They also collect parameters like functions. So if they pass them parameters or if you know where they come from, we have to pass them like props and then they will give us values for here. And also if they use imports, imports you now which we call partials. And even though in the newer version for SAS, we not only use the keyword import, we don't use the keyword forward and we use the keyword use. But just to say that import now partial will be that we say in our imports it be. Uh, if they use SAS, you're going to hear SAS and you're going to hear SCSS. The main difference is not just the syntax. SAS, that are SASS, it be like Python syntax. So you're going to use code indentation for here. You go just the right time. You don't get those curly braces. You go just the right time, kind of like this now, right? But if they use the SCSS, which that one way we go to use, and one way most people they use, because you get these curly braces for here. This curly brace for here, curly brace, curly brace, this opening and closing curly braces. That's why we need to use so that my eyes are in order to the tongue, in order to the confusion. So it doesn't like say they like CSS. That's why we like this SAS. Because it be like saying it with this version, this syntax. It'd be like saying we just the right hand. But before you go feel use the syntax, your file, you go need to name your file dot SCSS. No one name them dot SAS. If you name them dot SAS, you go need to use this format. If you name them dot SCSS, you go need to use this sorry, this syntax. Alright? Now, if you work with SAS, uh, you will need to they use uh, naming conventions like BEM, they call them BEM, the way you will name your class now within the airport. So BEM just stands for Block Element Modifier. It helps us the structure of our code, it helps us the structure of our class, it helps us see if a person just see your code or even use 
that you know what you do when you delete your CSS. It enables read CSS much easier, it enables to maintain our CSS server. So this B or this block, it just enables us to represent like what they hold the whole component, like the card or something, if you get the card. The elements now within they live inside the block. So anything when they live inside the block, you know if you live outside the block of a component, you only feel live inside the block itself. Then I will element they live. And of course the modifier now within the modify either the elements or the modify either the block. So this is not just a quick example of waiting to be. The block, now this card for here, where we get like, let's say we get the card, right? So this will be our block. So we'll give up a class of card. Then the element will be like the title for here, now we're for purple. This title now, we'll give up this underscore or double underscore, then the title. This double underscore now, anybody will read that will know, say, oh, this is not BM and this is not element inside a block. We all know how anybody will read this code will know how people understand that just by looking at that double underscore. That's what we call them the BM methodology. Okay? Then, of course, the modifier, once we say double dash dash and then the title, or we put them to wherever we want to attach them. Whenever we put that double dash on top of a card, once we draw like that, it could change the whole element. If you modify the text, if you modify the title, if you modify the card itself, you know what I'm So that now all we have a like show now about SARS for this video. Now make we start to the enter this code, make I show now the project we could build for this video. So if you're not gonna like subscribe to this channel, then you have to just scan this code for up here. If you're not scan this code, not feel subscribed to the channel, and of course, when I feel you follow me for social media. Movies. So this is not the project we will go build for this video. Some of now we never follow our Telegram group. This is not written. I and some of us build together. And then of course I just add some kind of physics, so it will just make sense for when we want to learn this thing. When I think copy the code or use this portfolio website, change things around like change the picture, change the text, make up your own, and then you go be share around with your future employees. I could drop the link for the description for now so that when I will fit download the code. Alright, so we get this nice logo. When I feel change this logo text to anything you want, and you could get this glowing effect for here. And then we also add that same glowing effect for all these navigation items, all these uh, menu items within here. And then you can even still download your CV for here. So whenever we click this download CV, it will take us to a link where it will allow us to take even download our CV from the site. Of course, this let's chat here, if you click on, it will take you go our Telegram group. So if I click on, I will go into the Telegram group. By the way, if you want preview this site, uh, I will drop the link for now to see the demo of them, even if you want to see the demo before you even download the code, okay? Then uh, I just put this nice over effect for us here, so that we just get this glowing effect. You see how? So we let that nice glowing effect. So we can scroll down. And of course, this is not just dummy text for now. Uh, we're going to feature change for the about section and some nice icons where we use for font awesome on top of the side. So for this section, we get these skills right here. And this is not like slider, uh, skill slider. So if you look here, you can see say we get things we uh, if you put as a developer. If you look, this also they very responsive and I can show now how I do them. Then if you come here into the skills, you can see say this skills account, we go do our own skills. I know say get uh, libraries, jQuery libraries and all that stuff. I just decide make we write our own counter JavaScript by ourselves, all right? And of course we get this form, which when we upload them to Netlify, we go feel they use this form, they collect real information from our users. So now I don't watch the previous video or one of our videos in the past, but say we use Netlify, you know, if you check that video out, I could drop link for the description so you will know how I take host the site. Now, if you say make we make this responsive, make we see. So when we say we want to open up for responsive mode, you will see say we get a menu item. And if we click this menu, we get a menu, or we can click this icon for here, we get this menu where they open for the sides, right? And if I close now, it go just by clicking there, it will close the side bar. Also, if we click on again to open up and you click anywhere out of this menu, like on the side for here, so it will also close that. So I'm going to show now how we will build all this ones with JavaScript, right? And then we will scroll down a bit, make we see how responsive it be. And you see, say we don't need to break those long groups into four groups. So we will use grid and all that for this section for here. And here we can make this responsive slider so that uh, our any mode, our site could still look beautiful on top there. And of course, our camera still look very nice, and of course, our forms look very nice. So if you check out, this is not full or single page sites where you can use for your portfolio, all right? So make we enter into the video soon. So to build this project, we want to just see for this. So I will need you something what they call Paso. Um, because we want to run the latest version of SaaS, uh, we should they run SaaS for the terminal for Paso Bundler. We don't really follow SaaS com, the newest version of SaaS. So we should they use the new version of SaaS for here. So first thing, maybe we first check what in the inside the package.json. And inside this package.json, you will see say we get our scripts for here. And this script, we just they use them to the run our HTML. Parcel, now it will do the rest. It will help us compile our code, it will help us bundle our code, it will help us 
it will help us minify our code. Everything we need to do, we could do and for us. Then when we don't finish the work or development, whenever we want to build our code or our entire site, if you just run this one uh, to build and go help us build a static uh, portfolio website for you. If you look here, you can see, say, for down here, we get our parcel as our depth dependency, all right? And then we get our parcel uh, trans transformer where they, this is not plugging for parcel, where they help parcel to the transform SaaS for us, okay? Now, because this, they use PNPM, make, make, make sure, say, when I get node installed, and make, make sure, say, when I get PNPM also installed on top of your laptop. If you use NPM, if you use Yarn, but me, I always use PNPM, if you don't know, make sure know. If you look for inside here, you can see, say, we get our node module, make sure ignore that one. We even get this parcel cache, make sure ignore that one too. Uh, but if you look here, whenever we run this build script, it will build into our distribution folder, which is this, this folder. So this one, now the, uh, what will they call, production um, build of our uh, website or portfolio when we want build okay now for inside this src folder you will see say i get this image if you open the image not just the logo will be here and if you open the scripts folder not just small things will be here for inside the S uh, scss you're going to say for inside this scss i get more folders inside here but i get this main dot scss for inside the html you will see say we just link our portfolio here where we just they bring in our font awesome and we just they also bring in some other third party libraries we would like to use to the build our project so we just they use all the cdns for here for inside our html so they get other ways but i did do this one but because this video they on uh, focus on SaaS, then i why we just run this package like this all right now if you look here you can see say for inside this password directory say i can't they link my style sheet to this style sheet here so from this html i can't link them to the src folder uh, sorry the scss folder which now this folder for here and then i can't link them to this main.scss which now this file will be inside this folder for here right so because now this one will be used as entry points let me see what's going to happen for here this main.scss9 we can use like our entry points where we use to the send all our style sheets into RAM where we want to use all right so no write any other code for inside here now before you get away with the import code for inside SAS. now this is not the way SAS they use them before but now you get new way with SAS they use them and so very soon even said what is very soon by now say they don't already stop so they use this one so if you look here you can say i just use this as used rule if you look here you can see say i just import some kind directory so i didn't put all these files within here now why they import all these files for inside here this folder this is now what we call the seven to one rule the seven to one rule or seven to one architecture now just something where they use the understand how we they write our SAS. so not say you need to do them like this but this is now the way the industry or some of the nicest ways where you do follow they use SAS for them uh, I they always advise you now make sure they read the documentation because now here where I will say that's old imports you know they work and now here where I see say the use now they use now all right so make sure they always they try read documentations because that's not part of the job as a developer now before I get distracted make we go into the documentation for here and if you just click this documentation so if you check here they get all the rules when you use now I look up all the rules for here but I could just show now say or if you define anything for here for example if you define the rules on how use they work you see just come to this add rules and then you will click on this use so this will give us all the information we will need and examples on how we feel they use this add rule we will also use the forward i believe say this is the most important two way for me and for any of you now we just have to use us or want understand us where we feel they use i will see show now some very interesting ones like how to use if statements and how to use mixings so we could go uh, back into our first code and for inside the VS Code, you will see say we don't already the link to these directories for here. So these directories now just or these folders now just the folders where they, where they keep all our styles. So I will open up my um, HTML for here. Make I can show now how we they run with these styles. So the first thing I would like to do is say inside the header, you will see say I name this header like this. You will see say I call them header, and then I can call them header for inside here. I can call them header underscore underscore logo. Well, now remember the being where I just take explain for now. Then I'm waiting with the try is the header. If you look here, you can see say this header now our block, right? Based on the BM methodology. And if you look for inside here, you can see say for inside this header underscore underscore logo will be the element. So this logo now, not if live anywhere outside this header. Remember? Now waiting I show now for the slides. Then if you look for inside here, you can see say we also get an element which now the header desktop. So this is say this header for the desktop, now so it behave 
and also if you see say this one for the mobile and so it will behave these are two elements when no feed leave outside this header block will be put away so the class name is very important and just like this i don't need to create this header and if anybody will just look this code and say oh these are the block these are the elements these are the other elements uh, and these are another elements where they inside this header block so you see say all these things they make our life much easier to work with as developers if you come into this abstract folder for here you must say i get this variable mixings and i get this index the variable ladder dot scss that file away i de keep all the variables where i want so if you see, say i keep all the colors for here i just name them as uh, color primary secondary white and so on and so forth and i just they come here they name a font family which not just any text all these ones are just variable declarations so we just assign this font name like a variable this font name variable to these strings with they here or this list of strings with they for here we can also just assign this border sn this will be anything if you call a go to if you call a monkey but we just assign out to this uh 0.5 rem for here so this not just variable well unlike javascript you know they put any export statements for here but once you write down like this this will be our styles for our variable so a lot of the code for here i don't have any way we say on a feed call and on a feed change the code and make them your own code right so if you come for inside here, you can see say we just get some mixings. I will get to the mixing in a bit, but maybe come inside here into this underscore index.scss. This underscore means say now partial. Partial means say now something where we want import. Whenever we put this underscore, the SAS preprocessor, the parcel bundler who can help us understand, see say, oh, this is not SAS where this guy wants right for here. So this add forward rule, what's in the name to say I want to forward whatever they hear and expose them for an import or to use them somewhere then are waiting the use rule they wait for so once we don't like this based on this index just you know say parcel or our uh, SAS compiler go look for this underscore index once you see them for inside here our main it could come use that variable so you see say i just a link to only the file folder and this will be very common when you work with programming based on the index so maybe open that base and typography. The base and typography, it just means say, or the base rather, you can see as I did bring in these variables for here. You see, say I did use the use rule. Well, the use rule, it they work like this. The use rule, they always they work on top of the file when they declare. You know, they work outside that file. So I just say, let them know, say, go inside this directory, this URL, find the variables and use everything for here. Now, this convention or this way we did ID one is called the wildcard. Let me say, as I put this star, I just select all the variables for here. Say I want to use them and I don't mind. I call them V for here. Anytime now, if I run this code, it will get error. But anytime when I put this V for here, if I want to use this code, I only put the V dot and then this will fit work correctly. Now, because we they use parcel, I for like make we run this code, make we even test them to say it will work for us. So I just come here into my terminal. If you just come here and say I want to run pnpn run start. Okay, now this will start our development server so that I feel they see the reload on our side. So once you show like this, this means say pass to they work correctly. So to open this one here, if you just right um, press control on your keyboard and then you just click this link, we go open our browser for us. So you see, you don't they run our site for here, everything they work nice, nice. Uh, as we don't run this project for here, we basically say our code no break for here. But if I can't change this V now and I say I just want to import just like this, I will get an error. So how we'll take six time, we say we will just need to put that either with the names for here. So if you say you want them as V, you're supposed to stop the server with control C and then uh, I go press off and I go press enter again, which will start restart the server for us. And once it starts, it will build again. The reason why I go need to the, uh, stop the server, start the server, and that's because of that error. So make I try to fix up. Maybe say we know we get that error again, or we know that they use this VVV all the time. Run now. I just say our code they work. So that's a very important thing to they know how to they import or to they work with your partials. So maybe we look another thing for inside SAS and make I show now that now basically called nesting. And nesting now way for us to they create a component and then we're going to add things inside that component. A very good example for nesting and say make I show now. Now, you can say for inside this hero section, we get like an image, uh, we get a text for here, we also get like small text and button, and you understand that section, this section for here where they look like this, no be the same section it did with this section. So what do you want? Well, we want where we say we go see they affect the element and we know the style outside that element. Then I will say the next thing be. Make a show now for here. Make we go into the pages directory and inside these pages, make we just say we want to go into the home and I will close the sidebar so that we get space. 
So if you look for inside here, you will see I get the serial section starts for here. If I close out, you will see I get hero. You will see I also get another class of about. You will see I get another class of services. You will see I get another class of contacts. All right. Now all these classes we did for here, so they really affect each section. So that's how I just put them. This one here, now the um, ambassador sign. And this ambassador, what did they do? They say if they tell us say we want to use the parent selector. So then I say we want to use the existing parent selector plus this content. So make I show now the HTML. Uh, you can see so we get the hero class as a block, and then we get the class of hero content as the element. But if you put your mouse for here, you can see say this hero underscore underscore content. Now so they show. Even though we don't write that for me, you see say we don't write the word hero underscore underscore content. But just because we put this add or ambassador sign when we call it for uh, English, then we can't see this uh, hero for inside here. So to say I call her monkey, you can see say here now we could change to monkey. Let me try and say, make I see. So if I say monkey, although I won't save it because the code could break. If I put the mouse here, you can see say it don't change to monkey for here. So this now waiting, the thing they do. And if you go deeper and deeper, now this now waiting they call the nesting. So this H1, it don't can affect the other H1s, it will only affect this H1. Even if the stars will resemble this one, now you're going to use they put all the FEs where we want inside this content. So now only inside this content, we want the affect this H1 and want the affect this span tag we have span class with the inside because this this H1 they different from this H1. All right, then how we take side And by the way, those of you now we know they when we code this up, we're gonna try to join our next call or like call. We'll say we're gonna code these kind of projects together. And I like learn from some of you now because I remember uh Celine with the very helpful and Daniel with the very helpful when they do this project. So big shout out to you guys. Now if we move down, uh, we can see waiting again, we can't do. So if they look, say, for inside here, we just style all this with our own variables, right? But if you can't look for inside this place here, you can see, say, I get this mixing. Now, what did this include where you look? This include now way for us today, call a mixing. Now, where don't, where don't they work with JavaScript? You're going to say, whenever you write a function with JavaScript, you feel they give up an argument, for example, and you feel they was, you suppose they call up whenever you want to use Then I will think mixings be. So to see the mixings, every time when they create mixings, I always like put my mixings for inside the abstract folder and for inside the abstract, I can't create these mixings for you. So make me look the mixings, make me see how I take make these mixings and how I take user. A very good example to say, make me come down here. And if you look for inside here, this neon effect with the here. So this is it, I get this neon text. This is not just that FZ, that glow glow text. This one for here. This is not just waiting to be. We just they use mixing as mixing rule to they create this neon text mixing, which resemble JavaScript function, right? So if you say we just recall all these variables for here, and then we just use the variables for inside this our uh, uh, mixing for here. So, so if you look here, this is not just uh, something where we say on a few change the code for one place, and when I change that code, it go change everywhere. Once I type that variables, I feel enter into the variables. Now, I feel change this color to anything I want. So if I just put the mouse on here, I feel just change this color to anything I want. So any of the colors I use for here, so whenever when I want to change this code for here, you can feel free to come here, change the color to any color. But if you say you like where we're like blue, purple, whatever, and then once you do like that, press it, it will change the color for you everywhere, even down to this glow effect and uh, even down to this one. So that now one of the powers of now we don't know about variables of why we do one like this again. And that's why we want to use this as include rule. This as include rule now in the help us they include or they call our mixings as a function. No, so if you look for here, you can see say we get this mixings of respond, and then we call it pass up a value of tab dashboard. This just means say that the screen size where you want to apply these styles to them. All right. So make I show now for here. So, so I talk say for tab dash styles, I want to do a particular um, different style. So make I show now. If you come back into the mixings folder, you can see say we get this uh, respond mixing. This respond mixing now just something we say I they use today instead of make I they always write at media query all the time make we they use that to the group the media queries where we want and then based on the value or the breakpoint will be set for inside this our mixing function now the output or now the style where we want to give for here so so if you look for here you will see say our breakpoints when we pass in here we call it run an if statement now so we run the if statement on top as at if and then we're going to check if the breakpoints they equals to Anything will be passed as the argument. So we can talk say, okay, well, if this condition they true, then make it run this code. So we say make it then do at media query uh, only for this type of screens and above, which will be like about 600 pixels. Now that time in Lono, where we won't come run this content. So whatever code will be put as the content, make it enter here. So whatever styles will be put, make it they apply those rules or those styles into only this screen sizes if this condition they true. All right. Another one we say we want this. 
condition, but if, if the breakpoint will be set as the argument, if we pass up or as a parameter, you see same thing. Expect this breakpoint parameter, so if we pass in this tab box for here, again, it will do the same thing we do for the top. It will check out if not the same, if not the screen size, it will run uh, our code for us and it will spit whatever value we will be passed on inside here as the contents, right? So it is very simple just because we did run like this to the user. So what you see as I take user from here, if you come inside the home back, you will easily get the response. So I come passing this tab port, right? Remember, so we come passing make up now. With the tab port, so you see, say for this tab port for 900 pixels, make it apply the styles for here. So I said, okay, for 900 pixels, so this size has to be like this now. I want to change this group of elements. So this one, since my flex, that I want to change the flex direction, since my flex box is to flex reverse. So now I say, if I know color reverse for here, if I just color column, the picture will come down and will be like this. Actually, this is not even bad. I don't like, I don't mind them, but because I want to make it just be uh, reverse, so that's why I put the styles for reverse. So we carry this. Elements for here and it will switch them to the first one here. So we press it to say it don't reverse them for us. Also, we get the gap and uh, we just set the text alignment to center, but we set them for only for only when it takes into the screen size alone. Now we did draw them like this one. So this is not how we did use our mixings by calling this as include and then so we will take the call the mixing, like say we call a function on top of our uh, uh, SCSS or SAS file. So all right now if we say make we open up this directory again okay? if you look for here this is it i get this layout folder now here where i come to put the header and the footer so every star we need to do with this heading now i have put for here so so if i come here you will see say the heading it gets us b like i show you always make sure say your import statement they always did the top the number one or number two or whatever on top of all your other code you don't need to put them for under put them under your code feed break now from inside the header you see say we get some stars for here so make me see we get the responsive behavior for here, which like include. We also get our nesting for here, which are our ambassadors. But if you look here, you can see say I get nesting for desktop and I get styles for the mobile styles. So when we see the mobile since we did mobile view. And I just they set the media queries for here, the responsive behavior. And in this is say I see the nest inside this. Uh, mobile view for here. So this URL or this I or this icon, you know, will affect any other element except it inside this class of uh, what we call it, header underscore underscore mobile. And you see the CSS specificity rule say it is zero for here, so no wahala. Now, if you come here, if you look for inside here, on a few download the buttons, uh, on a few look, just look the main HTML code, you will see how we take set that one up. So you this is say to download, you will need to just get the link to the file where they the internet. I just they use uh, my Cloudinary. Now we don't know what Cloudinary is, and I would like to know how I detect use Cloudinary, they work for myself or they work for a client website and all that stuff. Just let me know and I will show now. Um, but what we do is say we get this Cloudinary link and we just they use them to the set the download. Uh, for this uh, link for here, so whenever a person click down, it will go online, it will collect the file and it will set up as the download. And of course, this is our Telegram link for here. We just set down so that whenever someone click down, it will open a new tab. Then we use this target blank, I suppose you know this right now. But something very interesting for here, and that now the class, the class of btn underscore um, btn dash dash outline. This btn dash dash outline, what they do is say they change this button. So the moment is to say I even btn btn for here, or if I just leave it like this. It could change this style of this button for me. They compile, and let's say you don't give me the same style just like this one. Now, no, because nobody waiting we want, I would want a different one than where BEM comes in. So BEM can't make us to get modifier. So we remember, say we get the block, which is the hero, and we get the elements, which are the buttons, because now here you will see these buttons, and then we get the modifier. See that modifier? We could go into the button. To do that, I could just um okay, add that code back for the outline. Now, the button they leave inside the component directory or the component folder. Now, this modifier, you can see the way the code stands. So, if I put the mouse for here, you can see say, this is not style. So, the, the class, sorry. So, the class now, btn dash dash outline. This btn dash dash outline, and I don't know, say, now, so it will be for here. But because we get them like this now, we get two types of buttons. We get the normal btn, and then we can modify the same btn by changing this to whatever we want. All right? So, that's a very interesting thing to work with uh, BEM methodology so uh another thing we have to like show now now the slides for here now this slides for here now waiting we they use as a javascript third party library and that third party library will be used now swiper so to use that swiper i could just show now how i take bring up into the application for here now if you look for here you will see say i import the swiper js but the minified version and that css where they add so i just add them for here as a css file 
So that just means say we go need to add our swiper uh, CSS and then we go need to add our swiper JavaScript. Uh, if you now want to see uh, another video where we use them well, well, then make sure let me know for the comment section and then uh, we go look deeper into swiper JS. All right. Make I show now how this one they work. This one they work like this. We say it only count up whenever the page don't load and whenever we don't scroll. Make I open up the VS Code for here. We can make it bigger and then make we see what we get for inside the VS Code. So if you come into the body of this code, make you come go down into the pages. I will make you come enter into the skills. So make you find now my skills. Now for inside this my skills block for here, you can see say we get the services underscore skills. So this service underscore skills element, what will they do? We say we can't they use them as a list to they list out all these counters where they here. So we can't they count our counter for this data counter for here. Now this data counter no be HTML follow com data attribute. Though. This one now our own custom uh, attributes where we they add for on top this uh, H5 for here. So any value where we give if we set them to 200 for here, it's supposed to give us you okay, see 200. We set them to 200, then our counter will count all the way up to 200. Make I show now. So if I just go back into the browser, just look this counter for here, and you will see the count up to 200. And when you reach 200, it go stop. Okay. So then how we they set this counter? Now make we go into the um, JavaScript. We could just go into make we press Control P to open up our search, and then for inside here, uh, make we just search for our scripts. So because now our JavaScript will be fine, so we could just say one go our main.js. Inside this main.js, you can see say I don't already set this counter for here. So this class of counter now we they use they target the element where we want. So if you look here, you can see say we get this class of counter, and if you look here, you can see say we get this class of counter, another class of counter for JavaScript, and another class of counter for this Node.js we they for here. So so because we they get different counters. I can't use this JavaScript here. They select all. So the document does, and the query selector all. Now in Google, we go use they select every element we get class of counter. So as we target and get other elements, we go put them inside like a list or like an array for us or an array of uh, HTML elements for us. As you did like that, we go come use this node list. Of course, we go use this node list to they do what we want to do. So for inside here, now here where we can't run this code. So if you look for here, you will see say we get this counted and this counted now boolean, right? So now this boolean we did for here, and that means say we set down to either true or false. So now we do with the boolean. So because now boolean, we feel check whether no be true or no be false. And if not true, and only if not true, if this condition not true, because remember, say we put this bank and this bank or exclamation now not true, meaning say if the value where we set down the initial value is not it, and then make it can run this um, code for here so we can't call this function of is in viewport if you open the function you will see say we just they use the function where they collect we, we write this function where they collect an element we can't use and they check the boundary uh client rect and once we they check that that now the area like the boundaries of the screen as they check that boundaries now we they call rect that just means say the counter did the view that now why we they run this check for here so if it did viewport then that time goes trigger to true and then it will fire this counter and will run this function on top of this counter so what's in the function it will run this counter function look we see what's in they expect so it is expect a counter element which now what we pass in and then it can they expect the uh variable or where, where we want the attributes where we want all right so make we check make we go into this counter function and this is it we get the counter function where they're taking an element and they're taking an amount so this element and amount we won't pass in now just this one will say we don't pass in for our own uh, previous function we look for there so i hope say this will explain given uh, all the things we are going to need to the build very interesting and interactive portfolio website for here soon all right so i will see you now for the next video